take three. Hi guys, Cody Smith here, Set Life Productions, episode two, The New Normal. I'm here today with Set Life writer, collaborator, and host slash co-host, but mainly host of the show, Shut Up a Minute, Shay Murphy. Shay, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. <sighs> I'm trying to find more time to just like sit and sigh like an old man, but I don't have like a rocking chair yet. I feel like I need a rocking chair to really you like. You need a rocking chair and definitely like a corn cob pipe. Absolutely. And one of those jugs of moonshine. Oh, I, I could use a jug of moonshine right now. <laughs> so today, one of the topic I want to talk about that I feel is kind of very, very near and dear to your heart is trans visibility. What is trans visibility to you? Okay, um, trans visibility, like, that's a, it's complex. So, I understand, like, the generic term of it. It's the transgender people kind of being out there, you associating. So, like, they become normal. That's, yeah. you know, where it's a normal thing in life and people will adjust to it, uh, which has been happening. Actually, I spoke with a couple transgender uh, friends of mine today, and... I was asking them, I was like, yo, do you have anything negative to really say? And all of them were like, not really, not as far as me being trans at least. So I feel like trans visibility, we're achieving it, but I feel like there's another level to that visibility. And um, this is something I thought a lot about today uh, and in anticipation for this. And that's that, um, Though we are like becoming visible, like you see us out there where you, you all, most people know a trans person nowadays. Uh, when I first started transitioning, you had the more, you were more likely to know a serial killer than you were a transgender person. God damn. Yep, that was five years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, right? It wasn't that long. So, um, but what I'm seeing now is one question that always keeps me up at night is like, other than transgender, what are you? Ooh. You know what I mean? Like what, yeah. that can't be the whole definition of a person. That's and we've got that visibility now. Like, you know, we're here, we're all over the place and we're friends, we're family. So, but what are you other than that? And I feel like that's been, that's one of the biggest questions that uh, transgender, being transgender can take over your personality. It can determine your activities you do. It can determine how you dress, how you walk, how you speak to people. Uh, so I've actually been using COVID-19 a lot to uh, reflect on that and find what you know other definitions of myself that's that's actually a very interesting point that I never thought about because I myself am very cis and even like when a cis person wraps their identity around being cis like when you have this your stereotypical manly men who just want a beard and to eat bacon and steak their personality isn't being centered around the attributes they're using to reaffirm how cisgender, how manly man they are. It's, oh yeah, that's Brian. He just really likes bacon and beer and boobs. But watching all my trans friends and such do very similar things, in that case, it seems to revolve more around like, oh yeah, that's Brian. He's kind of new to this, so he's really like harping on all the bacon and the beer. Yeah. It's like, 
<clears throat> not really something I myself would have thought about. So that's actually a really interesting pr perspective. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, no, actually, I've seen that. Um, I I'm guilty of it completely. Shut up a minute. The show that I co-host, or uh, I'm the host. Uh, Todd's a space filler. But the show, so the show that I'm on, shut up a minute. Me and Todd, before I transitioned, this is about 10 years ago, actually had a sketch comedy channel on YouTube. And I remember that when I started transitioning and I look back on those videos, I just assumed that part of my life is over. You can never go back to it. You, you're not a man and you're transitioning to be a woman. You don't fit anymore. So a lot of transgender people, I feel like, in order to achieve that level of masculinity or femininity that they are, you know, striving for, will let passions go because it does not fit a gender stereotype. Um, and I've actually been attacked by friends before because like, I'm, I like working on cars. It's just what I like doing. I like cars, I think they're interesting. And um, I've been attacked by people where they're like, well, that's not very, you know, female. Mm -hmm. And then I get the exact opposite attack, which are well-intentioned, but still an attack where I'm like, oh, I don't work on cars because I don't want to seem too masculine. And they're like, well, I'm a girl. I work on cars. And you're like, yes, you're a girl. That's great. And that's never been brought into question, actually. Uh, but if I walk down the street, my gender is brought into question. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I respect that you work on cars, but... I'm called into question no matter what I do. I don't want to bring attention. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. The idea that trans women aren't allowed to be tomboys. No. Is once again, one of those things that I never really have thought about, which thank you for all, for all this perspective. Like I genuinely, like, you can read Laura Jane Grace's biography. Love it. But you're not really going to be able to, like, get the full story until you sit down with somebody. I actually, um, you're talking about the biography Tranny, correct? Absolutely. I read that, and uh, literally, like, because uh, Laura Jane Grace was in Naples. Mm -hmm. I literally, like, cried at a few parts because it, I, like, it was so me. Like, I was like, this is exactly how I felt. I've been through this exact situation. Um, Lauren Jane Grace is one of my idols. I love her because she is one of those trans people who um, is like, I'm a female, but she has this, I don't give a fuck attitude. Yeah. She I'm was, still going to be who I am as a person. She was punk before she came out and she's going to be punk long after. Exactly. And I love it. So, so yes, that book is that book is one of the best books to read to try and understand what a transgender person's going through. Um, in our community, I've met other transgender people who there are other books that would fit them, and I've read other books that didn't fit me. It's mm -hmm. not a one size fits all. Yeah. Um, this is actually a really good area to explore. How does having a idol that's able, that's been through and experienced very similar things to yourself and have has been brought up in the very similar community done to help you get through any issues that you're having does that help or does it kind of double up on the dysphoria uh no actually um it helps very much so it's you don't feel so alone when you find that that uh that perfect fit, you know what I mean? And for me, that was Laura Jane Grace, because I am very punk rock. I do love, uh, I'm more into rockabilly and psychabilly, mm -hmm. but that's into that punk rock genre. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I've loved uh, Laura Jane Grace's music from before she transitioned. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's it, it, something I can read and it like affirms like what I feel. And it make, it validates me. There we go. I, I feel validated. Like, I am not insane. Like, this is real. And someone else felt the same way. 
I'm I'm really happy you can have that. I mean, yes, at least that. Um, so for those who don't know, what is dysphoria? You're talking about well, gender dysphoria. What it yes. what what is gender dysphoria in your own personal experience or definition? So, and, yeah. <clears throat> go ahead. No, I think that's the end of my thought. Okay, perfect. Um, so gender dysphoria, there's a lot to it. Um, I would say it's a lot like body dysmorphia, which I know a lot of people can relate to. It's seeing yourself in the mirror and not not seeing yourself almost. Like you see yourself, but you don't see yourself. Um, it's hearing your voice and you know you're speaking, but you also know that that's not you either. And it, because it gets to a point where you have multiple ways that it can affect you. Um, sometimes it just makes you depressed and you just want to lay in bed all day. Uh, some days it motivates me and I want to get up and do my makeup and look as pretty as I can. Sometimes though, it also makes it to where I just want to disassociate with myself and I almost become like a hollow shell of a person. Like no feeling, nothing. I don't even feel like I'm connected to what I'm doing. Would you say in your experience, there's actually, you find a link between dysmorphia and dysphoria? <clears throat> um, you know what, actually I would, um, because uh, dysmorphia is kind of one of the, I would say, what would you call that? It's like it, dysmorphia can give you dysphoria. Yeah. So if you're looking at your body and you don't like it, you that's dysmorphia. But then that plays into dysphoria because your brain automatically goes, oh, the reason you don't like your body is because you weren't born to look that way. So I feel like a big one of the counters that's used to dismiss being transgender is kind of the idea of, oh, I'm a guy. I want to know what it's like to have tits. Why should I have it? Why should the government <laughs> pay for my surgery to do that? I just want to know. What would you say to somebody who's d dismissing dysphoria as just like curiosity versus an innate feeling of wrongness? Um, okay, so someone who like dismisses dysphoria, number one, that's someone who's never dealt with any type of body dysmorphia or never felt self-conscious about themselves. And uh, I want to talk to him because I really want to know how he's managed that. I would love to know that or her, either one. I want to know. But what I would, it's so hard to explain. Um, transgender is one of those things like you can't really understand it until you've done it. Uh, and you, you can't expect people to either. I never, I never have. Um, I've always loved when people ask questions and things like that, because that's really the only way people are going to learn. But what I would probably say to them is, uh, you know, I try to be very, very polite and say, fuck off, asshole. Just politely. But just polite, very politely. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be a bitch. I love where this conversation's going. Like, even just from the concept of, I just want to get more outside my bubble. Like, I have spent most of my, I went to art school, so. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, like, art high school even. So, like, I was talking to, like, 14 and 15-year-olds who were coming out and exploring sexual identity and everything. Like, I remember when, like, we had our first wave of non-binary kids at the school that were openly out about being non-binary. Wow. wow. Yeah. We went to school in two different times. Oh, uh, yeah. We I, had, like, I had two gay people in school. That, like, that's true. Two gay no, people. Yeah. They weren't with each other either. They, they never are. Never. 
I was like, where did you find your boyfriend? And they always had boyfriends, but I never met them. Um, I, I'm not going to lie to you. In school, so part of being transgender, mm -hmm. you're, you feel like a female. Well, for me, I feel like a female. Absolutely. I always did. I always felt that way. Um, but I also knew that I wasn't supposed to feel that way or I felt I wasn't supposed to. I grew up in a very redneck family. Mm -hmm. So I would literally watch TV shows, movies, and just reenact how the manliest person in that show was. Yeah. The one that I focused on the majority of the time was Wolverine. Hell I'm yeah. not joking. There's a no. video on YouTube for me and Todd's old thing where I have the sideburns, like the Wolverine mutton chops. That's because I, I just replicated his actions. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. And people thought I was like the manliest person on the planet. Like literally, I'm pretty much just reciting his words like line for line in my life. I didn't actually find the word transgender until I was 25. And at that point, um, things just started adding up. And I was like, this makes sense. So we never had a huge gay community in my school. Believe it or not, we had a gay straight alliance. Um, but I was also taught to be homophobic my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I did do that through high school. Uh, I was actually at a bar one day and a gay kid from, you know, he was a gay male from high school. He was there and he talked to me about who I was during high school. And I was a terrible human being. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even mean to be that way. I wasn't trying to be offensive, but I was so busy trying to portray this character that I had created, which is why I'm really good at acting. Mm 